I'm so curious. You know, now everyone, everyone in France doesn't even know about Ronsard, and there's this gentleman very far on the other side of the Atlantic, interested by that. What, what's the story? How did it begin? Well, as I say, uh, I studied French literature uh, in college. Uh, I always loved to read, and uh, it started from that. And I was at Yale College, which has a, a history of book collecting. And a lot of professors were book collectors. And a lot, the Rare Book Library is a great library. So it started there and uh, just built up over the years. Of the well, I... <laughs> The first 16th century book that I bought, I was in Paris and uh, strolling along the quays, looking at book, Bouquinis, and I found a 16th century book, which I thought was very attractive. It wasn't in a beautiful binding like the one I showed you, but it was in a vellum binding. And it was a Cicero, one of his, a book of his orations with contemporary marginalia. So I thought, well, this is really interesting. And um, I fell in love with it. I, I paid almost nothing for it, maybe about $10 equivalent. And um, so I was taking classes at the Sorbonne at that time and uh, would walk by a bookseller on the way, Georges Habran, who had a shop on Rue de Seine. So I dropped in and showed it to him, introduced myself, showed it to him, and said, this, this must be a very valuable book with these notations and everything, that early binding. <laughs> he was a jovial character. And he said, oh, and he humored me for a while. I said, yeah, well, my young man, I, I'll tell you, it's really not worth anything. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's only one of three volumes. There's no provenance, no ownership, so we don't know who wrote these things. They're mostly textual emendations. So it's only worth about $10. <laughs> so I thought, well, he's trying to cheat me. And I said, well, if it's only worth about $10, you've got all these books along the walls. You must have similar books that are that value. He said, yeah, take a look. And it's at that point I realized by skipping a lunch or two, I could buy 16th century books. And that's when it started. It started in 1959. So that's when I started building my collection. But you were really interested not by modern lit literature, but by uh, Renaissance literature. No, no, I've always been interested in the Renaissance. Uh, Why? I just love it. You know, <laughs> it's hard, hard to describe why you love things sometimes. Yeah, but it's, it's even another language. It is, but... You know, I love French chateaus. I visited all the chateaus. I had a motorbike. I drove around the Loire Valley. I, I love the French Renaissance. You know, it's, it's, it's not hard to love something that's beautiful and magnificent and it's such a fabulous period in history. I've been told you also collect Moliere, right? Yes, I do. Who told you that? <laughs> you know, I'm a journalist. <laughs> so you snoop about. Yeah, no, I've got a very large Moliere collection. And you speak French? Yes. Ah, on pourrait parler un peu français alors. Oui, on peut, mais vous parlez tellement bien l'anglais, on peut continuer en anglais. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, and um, in, your, in your Renaissance library, could you tell about one or two things which are in the exhibition of the three things. Could you describe one or two things? Yes. Well, you should get the catalog for that. One, one, one I showed you the picture of that binding is on a Vitruvius in Italian with commentary uh, by Barbaro, who's, who actually um, commissioned uh, a, a wonderful country house by Palladio. So all the illustrations, it's illustrated. All the illustrations are uh, by Palladio, who worked with uh, Barbaro on that translation, the Italian translation of Vitruvius. I have a great love of architectural books. I have a lot of early architectural books, 16th century books. Wow. So that's that one. Let me show you, because all of mine are illustrated. All the books in the show are illustrated. And uh, what is your favorite book in your library? <laughs> you know, 
you don't ask people what which is their favorite child, do you? I know, I know. <laughs> but when the child are not here, you can tell something. I never do. <laughs> <laughs> you are a good father. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that's one. The Vitruvius. Here's another one. Okay. That's the Theocritus, printed by Aldus Manutius, who was a Venetian printer, very important printer in Venice from 1495. And it went through three generations and the press closed down in around 1595. Uh, the Theocritus is uh, one of the first books of Greek literature uh, 1495, um, and very important as, as a work of all this actually printed almost all of the first editions of Greek literature. So uh, my collection started with by buying all this editions, Aldings they're called. So there are a lot of Greek books. And so this fit in with that collection. Uh, although bindings also are uh, one of my collections. And here's the third one of mine that was in the show. Okay. Wow. And that's the Grand Orme Conditionis Bus, which is about uh, surveying and land measurements collected from a source of Roman writers, which you can see for someone like Lobespin, it would be an important book to have with the land that he owned and the chateaus that he owned and so forth. <clears throat> 